Hey everyone, we're up up for another really good conversation. I'm joined today by another exciting guest, uh, Jim Miraflor, who is actually a follower. We, we follow each other on Twitter, and uh, I like following Jim's uh, tweets <laughs> about many things. So, so again, welcome, Jim, and maybe for the benefit of the audience, uh, just a brief intro on your on your background and what you want to talk about. Um, hi, uh, hi everyone. Uh... I'm Jim. Some some people know me, know me as James. Uh, right now, I'm a member of the Scientific Computing Lab at the Department of Computer Science. So I was a graduate student there. So we we do all sorts of simulations. That's, so that's my uh, where, where my background in machine learning and AI is coming from. But uh, for my bread and butter, for what I do for a living, I'm I'm currently associated with the task force. For global health, uh, but I'm doing uh, something on strategic information on 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 metadata governance. So I I have the I'm deployed to I'm deployed at the Department of Health to fix their metadata. So uh, that's what I'm I'm doing right now. Uh, yeah, and then well, I've been Department of Health and metadata um, from personal yeah. experience. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very difficult. A bit so complex din yung mga systems nila. and you know it's it's less theory it's really knowing what the systems are and how they function and you know must difficult doon so walang theory yeah. um yeah aside from that uh, i i also did my my economics coursework masters at that UP school of economics thesis ta lang so yun um and then i came back to uh, informatics work computer science work yeah so i i think that's it i'm uh my my task uh, today is supposed to to discuss yung ano history of ai and yung mga subsequent philosophies and how it evolved yeah uh, you mentioned that yeah. nga and uh, i think most people are not aware that ai is a field that goes back i don't know almost a century na yata you know? um yeah. or hindi naman uh several decades for sure so yeah that's why i invited jim to talk today sige nga uh, if you want to kick it off uh uh, let's let's dive into the origins now. Where did AI yeah. come from? Yeah, siguro as a as a background lang. Parang kasi kapag sinasabi nating AI, we usually conflate it with first with machine learning, uh, which is a a very not really a modern uh modern branch of AI, but it has not always been the ascendant ascendant uh a notion when when you think about AI. And then much more recently, just a specific part of machine learning, which is uh, on natural language processing, basically the large language models which gave us um, chat GPT, etc. So, minsan nakakalimutan na all of these, uh, all of these uh, developments were a product of, of efforts that, that, that might, yeah, that might look different. And uh, because if we know, if you know that fact na, uh, yung mga previous developments are really very different, very weird looking, then we can anticipate that future developments as well, we might not even be able to recognize them or anticipate them now. So yun, an appreciation of history might, might allow us to be more open for 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 future uh, possibilities. Ng, say, uh. So yun, uh, basically, uh, the, the, the effort for AI is inseparable with uh, the effort to develop a computing theory. So basically in the 1950s. Uh, so sina ano ba yan? Sina Claude Shannon, if I remember correctly, he's one of the earliest ano, thinkers. Or predates Shannon pa? Yeah, I mean, uh, Shannon, uh, well, of course, na ni move forward niya yung, ano, yung information theory, which was uh, to, I mean, originally to figure out what's the most efficient way to transmit information to a series of cables and that developed nung panahon na yon. But um even before that uh there was this guy if, if of course we all know him Alan Turing uh which uh sort of made an effort to formalize the notion of what it is to be thinking or what it is to be uh computing for something. And of course if we associate intelligence with the notion of thinking then uh we can agree that uh, Alan Turing sort of was able to formalize it for us. So actually, hindi na, yung, yung notion of thinking as computing, it's not really a new notion. Uh, in fact, uh, si Thomas Hobbes, no, sa Leviathan, sinabi niya na yun na 
uh, all all rational thought can be reduced to uh, addition, division, multiplication, etc. So, so following that tradition, uh, Turing proposed that uh, kasi ang, ang context is World War II and they're trying to uh, figure out codes, right? For figure out uh, to uh, figure out ways to to crack codes of the enemies and. Uh, much of that is done manually by you know configuring uh, letters etc so he he did uh, uh, he created a particular machine to to crack a particular uh, uh Ito ba yung the enigma they're trying to beat yes. the enigma in world war yes. 2 tama world no, war 2 yes hmm. actually may magandang movie doon yung uh imitation, imitation game. game yes uh, it's, a, it's a good movie so so basically parang doon naisip niya na oh uh, maybe we can generalize what a, compu- a, a computer means. Kasi before, a computer is a person na technically talagang siya yung configure ng mga dials and siya yung nag-make ng arithmetic, uh, na, ng mga arithmetic operations, na which, which is what we associate with intelligence. So sabi niya, ah, sige, uh, let's think of um, uh, a very long tape. Uh, of, uh, and, and we have a head. Does that, we have a uh, sort of a a machine na moving across the tape and it just flips the switch from kasi mga nakasulat na zero uh you 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 switch it if if it is uh, one uh and if it is zero you switch it back to uh one so merong ganun and you can you can do all sorts of you can do all sorts of programs na instructions na how to flip it a certain way when you encounter a particular segment of the tape and he he proposed that all calculations can actually be reduced to to that uh, moving across the tape, and and that particular tape is what we call now as a as a Turing machine. Uh, in fact, most of our I mean, yung ating design of a modern computer is basically like that, right? Um, not not exactly, but uh, it's it's a sequential way uh, wherein we. We scan through the hard disk and we flip, we flip digits back and is, forth. Is this the root of the term? Ano, di ba sa programming they have something called Turing complete. Uh, yeah. Kaya may debate on is HTML a programming language? <laughs> ah, yun, eh. it's, nila, it's not Turing complete. Blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, th- there is this uh, rigorous notion that if a particular machine can be reduced to a Turing machine. Kasi uh, if, if there is a particular mapping of all the operations uh, of that particular machine or language or anything, to and you can map it to a Turing machine, then it's Turing complete. And, and yeah, hindi uh, in in na pala. If, if all the operations of Turing machine can be, kasi can be replicated, first, by, that be replicated by the machine, okay. then the, that machine is Turing complete. But that's not but, the Turing test, no? The yung, yung yeah, word na Turing uh, appears everywhere else, eh, di ba? Di pa, di pa. Well, actually, yun yung, yun yung origin. And uh, and because of that, some mathematicians uh, like Marvin Minsky, uh, Newell, I forgot, uh, Herbert Simon. Herbert Simon is um, another pioneer na siya lang yung naka, naka-win ng award, both no, Nobel Prize, Nobel Economics Prize, and Turing Award. Anyway, uh, kasama siya doon. And they devised this hypothesis called Physical Symbol Systems Hypothesis. Basically, ang kanilang assertion is since ano since uh, all calculations are ano can be represented by a Turing machine, then maybe uh, intelligence as we know it is in fact uh, can can be reduced to mere manipulation of symbols, right? So uh, yeah, everything what what we think, what we what we desire, what we associate with. Uh, smartness the, the capacity to strategize the capacity to optimize the, the, all of those can be uh, uh, reduced to uh, manipulation of symbols so that's a hypothesis right hindi, 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 baga, when when they propose that concept of pssh physical symbol system hypothesis they have to devise tests to prove that and one test na naisip nila is yung uh ah, well this kasama din naman kasi sa Turing doon is yung Turing test so basically if you have a machine uh digital machine or or any machine uh, based on physical symbols and and that machine can fool you into thinking that it's human 
if even for five minutes or or for some some duration of time then that's a that's a I mean that's a confirmation that it's that the machine is intelligent, right? So if um a phys uh, a machine based on physical symbols can actually mimic human intelligence, then that is intelligence. So of course, maraming well uh that before I go, meron bang meron ko ba bang so may mal may malabo ba ako na explain? Oh, okay naman. No no. So, so, okay. Uh, actually, the thing that's popping in my head right now is from the get go, pala. It was always a quest to replicate human intelligence, or was there an alternative chain of thought? Because yeah, mean, there's so many questions. Eh, parang is it enough to just pretend to be human, or do you really have to think like a human? And that's where, parang if you fast forward to today, that's where the debate on the large language models oh. comes from. No, pero if you go back in time, if the mission was always to replicate <clears throat> how a human would think, as opposed to how a human actually thinks. Parang at the roots pa lang yata, it, that, that, ano, that, that question already emerged. No? Yeah. Actually, may, well, baka, nat, baka madiscuss naman natin mamaya, may notion of the space of all possible minds na na-proposed recently that yung ating search for intelligence is not, it's really limited uh, by what we think is intelligent because, you know, we're humans. So baka we might not have access to the type of intelligence that animates, say, a uh, cephalopod, uh, uh, an octopus, because it's also intelligent, pero it has a different uh, neural wiring. So, yeah, I mean, uh, tama ka. Yung, yung origins of AI really is to try to replicate human intelligence. So, medyo may, may pagka-narcissistic kasi yung mga tao, eh, no? <laughs> we're the pinnacle of, ano, we're the pinnacle of, of sentience. So, therefore, if we're going to say something is intelligent, it has to resemble us. Right. Well, in in any case, itong itong Turing test, marami siyang critique, right? So, merong uh, one particular na strong na critique is yung kay John Searle, uh, yung uh, Chinese room argument. So basically, his argument goes like, uh, suppose you have uh, Searle in a room or, or any other person uh, na nagkritique na... Uh, na say ano siya nagte-take siya ng orders for a restaurant for a chinese restaurant and he doesn't speak english so when hindi siya maru- ay, uh, chinese ang alam niya lang is english so he 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 takes orders in chinese but he doesn't know what to do so gagawin niya i-consult niya yung rule book merong meron siya chinese rule book and uh, pag ano pag nakita niya ito yung ano symbols na associated dun sa english words na alam ko so yun ako kung niya order and for and like function siya so parang ang ang tanong ni John Searle don is does the does the person know no Chinese so and in in essence kapag ano inextend niya yun na sinabi niya na okay uh, ganon din sa intelligence na suppose you have a program which can mimic a person and that person uh, and and the way it mimics a person is yung mga inputs minamap niya lang sa what a human can can ano can uh, what's what's a human is expected to say or react how a human is expected to react so yung ba ay ano human like intelligence na so that's that's his assertion so syempre medyo ano doon kumbaga parang ah, we're, maybe we're just simulating intelligence it's not really intelligence yun yung lumabas hanggang sa nag-assert si ano uh, i think it was Minsky, I I forgot. Pero ang ang retort na mga nagpropose dun na, na mga PSSH people is, uh, it's not just the guy that is uh who speaks Chinese. It's the guy plus the rule book. So intelligence actually is a is a combination of a uh, combination of of stuff. Hindi siya iisa lang na o meron kang general stuff of intelligence. You need to have rule books with you. And uh, yun yung ano yun yung assertion nila against John Searle. Tapos hanggang sa si Marvin Minsky meron na siyang develop na na concept ng a society of mind na yung yung mind or, or yung intelligence it's not really reducible to a particular algorithm na this is intelligence you can go, you can set a ano but it is a combination of rule books combination of uh, algorithms which might not be 
So when when you say rule yeah. books, these are like ano, uh, boolean type logic mga or if then statements or yes. paano ba siya? Uh, basically that uh uh circuits basically uh if then else statements and and, and logical statements. Uh actually yung nakalimutan ko uh one of one of the consequence pala nung ganung ganung thinking yung yung uh yung mga if then else statements is the construction of what we know as the von Neumann machine uh, na meron kang mer- ang, ang ang computer is meron kang separate na memory meron kang separate na CPU and then meron kang uh, input output system na so so ganun parang yung mga ano yung memory mo yun yung mga marami kang mga rule books at meron kang meron kang nag ano uh, CPU basically na nag control noon but in any case those are still rule books yun yung yun yung assertion niya ni, ni Marvin Minsky na there's no ano general stuff of intelligence and kaya nagkaroon din siya ng ano nagkaroon din ng crisis yung ganung effort ng AI kasi una you really can condense everything into into a set of rules, set of rules. Right? Mm. or it yes, would so be parang, impossibly long parang ganun yes oh so parang and we, we they don't have enough computing power to to mimic unlike now which is mamaya pwedeng nating uh, ma-discuss kung ano paano na overcome yun but yun yung pinaka limitation ng physical symbol system hypothesis mga symbolists basically is they can't uh they can scale basically kasi they're limited with with the current technology on memory etc so so yun actually doon nagsimula yung ano first ai winter uh, yung mga ano symbol system merong mga pero sila mga device they, they're constructing robots na nabo si lc merong lc na parang mouse na nagdi-display ng ano intelligent behavior pero simple lang instructions niya na mga ganun, yung mga mga at that time parang it's very sophisticated oh ang galing parang nag-iisip siya para sa mga kalabas ng mis paano niya makukuha yung pagkain pero those are just ano those are just uh, program rules yeah and then during the i guess this is the symbolic ai parang ano no <clears throat> parang thought how do I mean, number one, finding a set of rules to encapsulate everything is hard I'm wondering if to differentiate it from machine learning, which came mm-hmm. later, how how would you propose or how would they propose to capture the rules? So is there some sort of yeah. a training process then, or I don't know, just thinking out loud? No? Yeah, actually, that's a good entry point to sa, sa next AI phase, which is your knowledge engineering phase. So basically, uh, since uh it's it's hard to ano uh, to list all the the rules then maybe we can ano uh, uh, at least build the ai by inputting more and more rules uh across domains that we know so para you just can't rely on you know condensing everything into a a clean rule book but you you allow knowledge to be codified and be inputted uh in sort of a common sense to to give the machine some sort of a common sense right so yeah, so may may effort na ganon and uh one of if if uh, the readers are uh, if if the listeners are familiar with yung yung concept ng ontological engineering, so basically they they you, you will attempt to ano uh, capture the the phenomenon in a set of logical statements, and then you will feed those logical statements to the machine, and that's how they built expert systems na that can diagnose kasi yeah, well yung basically yung med- medicine the science of medicine naman is a uh, has a has a list of concepts that they can you can actually input sa isang computer so that's that's the next effort that they they built a uh, large expert systems based on knowledge engineering so they they attempt to capture actually ang pinakel niyan is uh si yung si IBM yung nanalo ng Jeopardy si Watson Basically, that's the that's the peak of of knowledge engineering. Deep, so what deep blue? Oh, hindi. deep blue is Kasparov. Ah, eh. mm. uh, yung palak sa nakalimutan ko. Yung 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 kay yung deep blue is actually the peak of uh um uh, yung hindi naman siya peak kasi mayro pang stockfish. 
uh, basically in yung best demonstration ng symbolic of oh, symbolic system, AI no. symbolic AI na uh, through an algorithm called alpha beta pruning basically just trying out all all possible solutions uh, they were able to construct in uh, a software that can you know, beat a chess grandmaster and they they finally beat the best si Gary Kasparov around 90s but since then it kept on growing and yeah until it was defeated by uh when stockfish was defeated by uh alpha alpha, alpha yeah alpha go alpha go ba hindi, hindi pa alpha go si alpha Al- alpha go is for go diba mm. may so alpha that, chess ba? may may alpha uh, may may alpha chess eh. I forgot the name so wait si stockfish is still symbolic is what we're saying while yung uh, ano yung tumalo sa kanya is more like reinforcement learning tama ba or yes uh, neur- neural networks na okay or do nung after na matalo si stockfish nagkaroon na ng bagong stockfish yung stockfish nnue na mm. neural network na rin well in okay. in any case ba- balik tong tayo dong kay ano kay deep blue ay kay uh, joe party yep. so yun si joe party naman he, he, it was able to display intelligence because of that uh knowledge engineering and it's very you know it's very clever kasi uh this is watson this... they called it yes. watson the earlier watson at least yes so basically uh if yung mga ano kung kung sa mga nagpo-program may 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 concept na semantic web basically you put in tags dun sa mga html pages mo to to generate a metadata wala sang effects sa page pero para ni ano lalagay mo lang siya dun to describe yung data yun yung ni learn ni Watson so parang he was able to create association ng mga facts across the internet and yeah uh, so ibang ibang approach si si Watson and and eventually they were able to use Watson for di- medical diagnosis ganyan but still ang kanyang ang kanyang engine ay knowledge engineering yun yung kanyang powers basically basis basically yeah so well of course kasi may may limitation yun kasi i mean ang uh, you can just uh, it is as intelligent as you can instruct it to be right so it appears intelligent because it knows so much uh, but but then again it knows so much because you've manually inputted the knowledge na it's it's always limited by the by the workforce that you need to to build that kasi it's still human and human inputs are uh Kasi yung mga, yung mga ontologies, they, they have to be written in specific language. So, hindi naman nadidiscover ng, mas, ng algorithms yun, yung mga concepts na Like, what is a person? What is a place? So, you have to encode that. And doon sila kakakuha ng common sense. But, yan. Kaya, nagkaroon pa rin ng... I mean, yun yung nag, nag, ano, nag-trigger ng next AI winter. Yung mga expert systems ay hindi... It was uh, more... It was a bit disappointing basically sa kanyang capacity although impressive na right i mean manalo sa Joe Pardee na machine pero what what was the roadblock for that ano parang kasi di ba sabi mo the, in the symbolic era computing power basically and uh you just don't have enough rules for everything no pero in this era of the expert system um ano yung ultimately naging ano rin naging downfall if ever for that group well, well, first, it's it's not really genuine intelligence in the sense that uh, the interpretation of concepts, of ontologies, of of uh, of uh, the concepts that the machine understands is still inputted by humans. mga domain experts pa rin yung mga naglalagay, doctors pa rin, ganyan. So, kung in, in, hindi siya autonomous intelligence like that, you, know, you, you feed data, you feed uh, stuff, Alam bigyan mo lang ng wiki page, may extract niya na yung kung ano yung, ano yung, sino dito yung mga, mga actors, ano yung mga ginagawa nila, ano yung, kumbaga hindi niya, hindi siya makabuild ng world model on its own. So you have to, you have to have a human to translate it into a model, into a set of ontologies, set of uh, concepts. So that's one particular, one particular Ano, tas, and and of course it's also brittle like uh, kapag hindi mo ma kapag hindi mo mailagay yung concept uh, hindi niya ma-interpret hindi siya makaka, makaka-make ng judgment so wala siyang 
uh, kapas. May, may mga din device na may, may fuzzy logic. So it's not a very resilient reasoning yeah. system. Kasi yes. nga, or is it because conceptually it requires very precise inputs? Kasi nga that's how the knowledge or the ontology is built? Or I don't know if I'm capturing the the flow correctly, no? Well, yeah, it 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 is ano, it requires some precision. Uh, may mga ano, may mga approaches nga na yung karen sinabi ko, may may fuzzy logic, uh, na para may may degree of uncertainty kung ano yung i-apply niyang concept when a particular input is in, kung may element of randomization. But it's still just the hindi niya pa rin, hindi pa rin siya maka-create ng concepts on the fly, right? So parang uh, makakapag-ano lang siya, masisimulate niya lang yung parang medyo, ano, medyo nakakapanghula siya ng ibang ibang concepts. Pero from, from based from a text, uh, extracting the the knowledge from that autonomously, it's, uh, it's, it's very limited. May may mga attempts na based on sentence structure, ma-extract may subject, verb, yung subject object and predicate maganyan uh yeah but it, yeah it, it 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 really doesn't scale actually at this at this point i keep ano nga i was being like in the recent conversations i was talking to dr tehanki no of lasal hmm. as he's, he's more into the business ethics side and one thing i keep asking him and everyone is um mukhang there is there's a default position that looks at language as the way we encode knowledge. Although, if you think about it, it, even though it's a big chunk of what knowledge is, it's not the only thing that's really, that comprises knowledge. Because we have other mga senses, naman, no? visual, yeah. aud- audio. Pero parang ang naging life hack is even visual knowledge, like pictures, will be encoded the same way as text. Diba? Parang in, from an embedding standpoint. Siguro audio din, yung waveform magiging some sort of a, parang naging word din siya, no? parang yung, yung waveform. So, I don't know, if was there ever a debate on that? Na baka, bakit language yung default ano natin, parang approach? Uh, or is there any alternative din siguro yung tanong? Kasi the, the opposite of that would be something purely mathematical na lang. Diba? Parang ganun. Yeah. Well, well, basically, of course, it's uh, our, our computers right now are 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 von Neumann machines, right? They were built uh to support yung yung physical symbols manipulation, and because we have that as machines, we have those as uh, as computers. Uh, <clears throat> the way we do AI, I mean, for the longest time, was to you know, uh, transform them into symbols, into symbols that can be processed by digital circuits by end gates uh non gates or gates ganyan. so yeah so i mean it's it's one it's one consequence and the other is uh we had been able to achieve as a civilization such remarkable progress because of our language so it's more like uh the only thing that we we know <laughs> we we the only thing that we can model intelligence with right so parang uh yung yung sentiments or yung other other uh signals that that are physiological we we don't usually associate it with intelligence but because we created an intelligent society because of our language so that's uh yeah, that's one ano, one particular but of course we have been able to we have been able to ano uh i mean sort of at least AI world, which is yung next na next na phase, is we have been able to sort of sublate that or or uh, surpass that with machine learning and and with machine learning, parang you try to you try to reduce everything in in terms of uh quantifiable, I mean quanti- quantifiable categories like points in space, coordinates in space, and uh. You know, uh, distrib- statistical distributions such that those distributions uh you know can 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 predict ne- subsequent distributions which we which we can map out with intelligent actions so you know yeah, the next phase 
from ML naman, underneath the words is still some sort of a vector, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I find it fascinating na you know, language became the kind of the backbone of it. Uh, it might actually be inherently limiting also. Uh, but, you know, I don't know enough to suggest an alternative. No, <laughs> If it's not a word, then what? No, Or a sequence of words. Yun din, parang the idea of sequential processing, uh, no, I'm not, parang predicting sequences as opposed to predicting actual parang objects. Uh, I think it's part of the, maybe it's part of the path towards establishing knowledge, but I don't know if that's really the only way to do it. Kasi nga, I saw nga in, in, in another, I think it was another paper, where when they, when they fed text into a language model, pero it jumbled up, not necessarily in the right sequence it still performed <laughs> kahit pa paano it didn't necessarily impair the performance so parang lumalabas as far as the language model is concerned it doesn't matter you know, whether it's in a sequence or not as long as the the embeddings are correct no but anyway sige i'm skipping eras no yeah. back to you muna sige well it, it yung comment mo kanina it reminded me of this assertion by Noam Chomsky uh, link, linguist and 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 also a, an authority sa sa AI and he was asserting that language is something that is intrinsic sa human human being kasi it's uh meron siyang tinatawag na poverty of stimulus hypothesis na parang you really can't uh, understand language just by or you really can't learn language just by getting inputs especially when you're young dahil sa sobrang dami ng possible combination of words, of consonants, of, of sounds that you can associate with words. So ang assertion niya is there must be something in, in our brains that are that is really, that is evolved to to understand language, to understand a, and interpret language. So maybe it's a, maybe if, if you look at it, I don't know if there's an assert, may mga assertions na ganon. You can trace the origins of language from neural networks per se. Maybe that's how neural networks process things. Right? They they produce grammars. They produce. Ano, Actually, the, uh, the 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 contention. Um, because mm. I don't know I, if you're familiar with Lex Friedman. No? he's a mm. blogger. Uh, he usually interviews people from coming from computer science and then later philosophy, and then eventually na po punta sa aliens eh yung usapan. Mm. <laughs> and the whole concept is because. If we were to identify other intelligent, uh, you know, civilizations or beings, one of the first things you look for is the language. And then on the opposite side of that argument, what about, uh, you know, less in quote unquote less intelligent creatures, no, animals, um, who may not have an explicit language of their own, at least nothing we can perceive. But they exhibit some intelligence of their own, no? uh, rudimentary intelligence. No? They certainly know enough to survive. There's, they certainly know enough to reproduce and to grow. So yun yung contention na, oh, itong mga to, wala naman language, eh, pero well, they seem intelligent mm-hmm. enough. Or baka naman they have some sort of rudimentary language then na hindi natin ma-perceive, which is also counterintuitive na if we're supposedly the most advanced beings, di dapat the simpler form of communication gets din natin. Parang ganun. I don't know. Yeah, okay. yeah. Lots on that. Yeah, well, it, it, it's very interesting. Uh, na, naalala ko, meron mo, kung naparad mo na yung arrival, yeah, it's a, it's a, oh yeah, the, yung mga yeah. circular, mga patterns yes. of the aliens. Yes. Yeah, so parang, kumbaga parang, uh, it's not just that language is a consequence of intelligence, na, but, but the language that you have, also sorts of limits the things that you can think yun yung yung may may assertion din yung mga linguist yung sapir whorf hypothesis na you're limited your thinking is limited by the language that you have so parang do sa arrival because they have because their their language yung alien language na yun it allows them to look to the future or to see to see the to see time as a nonlinear nonlinear phenomenon so when when you when you understand their language, you would also be able to predict things or to to see things in a nonlinear, maybe circular manner. So baka baka ganon din kung baka uh, may may mana, <clears throat> sorry may pop question yan eh na mm-hmm. parang when you dream, do you dream in English 
<laughs> Tagalog. Di ba yung mga ganun? Uh, uh, I honestly, I don't know. I don't even remember what I dreamt about uh, or would it have been explained to me in some other language. No? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Oh nga, no? I mean, I have, I have never dreamt in a language that I don't understand. So, yeah, I mean, well, ang, ang ano dun is, uh, I mean, very rich in discussion dun sa, sa language. Does it determine intelligence? The, can it capture intelligence? Or is, is our notion of intelligence limited by the language that we already have? And maybe if we abandon that language, we see see others uh we see other ways of seeing the world we we explore other ways of seeing the world or sensing the world then maybe that will that make us more intelligent so uh yeah those those sorts of things well uh what we have right now that goes beyond human language is really uh machine learning yung yung the way we uh, try to re- reduce stuff into into their fundamental mathematical properties and then we when we solve a bunch of equations, we, we predict stuff. And uh, there are so many approaches. Pero yung dominant approach ngayon is yung neural network, uh, which is which was basically around for a very long time. Yun yung inisip sinasabi nila na uh, neural network is a new technology, deep learning. Actually, no. Uh, in the 1950s, it was already proposed by uh, McCulloch and Pitts, yung the concept of a perceptron. So they... They've designed uh, a neural uh, wiring uh, network, physical, basically that can, uh, that can, I think they can sense uh, tank images from from other images. Kanyan. Pero it turns out, ang nadetect lang para nung kanilang ginawa is ano ay ginawa ay yung kung ano yung light and dark, kasi darker yung ano, darker yung mga tank. Yung mga edge, no? Yun lang yung nakukuha yes. niya. Yeah. So, pero ayun yung ang yun yung well ang limitation kasi no basically is uh basically computational and hardware uh kaya hindi siya nag ano hindi siya nag-arise pero ngayon yung dahil sa lumakas lumaki yung ano natin lumaki yung uh because of uh ano to yung Moore's law lumaki yung ating capacity for computation at uh, uh dumami nang dumami yung CPU na kahit kaya nating i i ilagay sa isang integrated circuit ay yun basically so uh lumakas yung ating computing power basically so that's why we were able to make more and more sophisticated neural networks in fact uh tingin ko nakatulong diyan yung ano eh, yung yung bitcoin <laughs> yung yung boost na bitcoin na nag-invest sila sa mga GPU because basically, of the G- demand for GPUs yes. ano naggrow yes. siya no and gaming then basically no kasi b- gaming basically is Basically, GPU is used for uh, serialized, parallelized uh, calculations of matrices. So, and which is that—that that is what is required by neural networks. Because neural networks, yung, yung back propagation algorithm, basically it it calculates uh, matrices. And the the calculation of matrices, you can serialize it, you can parallelize it, and that is what GPU is useful for. It's for graphics. So nung lumaki yung lumaki yung lumaki yung ating capacity to produce better and better GPUs. Nagkaroon tayo ng ano, nagkaroon tayo ng capacity to process neural networks. So basically, so that that's why nagkaroon ng boom. And uh and yeah, uh we are we now end up in our world. And of course that's also changing and for maybe yeah, uh, we can discuss it a bit later. Pero may ano may mga threats dun sa sa ganung model natin na better and better GPUs and then uh mo, larger and larger large language models so basically yung mga large language models hindi na sila na create ng concepts on the fly you just feed it text and then they they create a a, a model uh via self supervised learning it's the and then kapag meron ka ng ganung ano ganung base model uh you use human interaction to further refine it so yun yung uh RHLF uh yung uh, reinforcement learning with human interaction so so that that concept of RLHF uh is that technically new or more of a uh, just the latest spin on cuz i would imagine we were fine tuning models long ago no so any thoughts about it's, the history it's it's a, it's a, it's fundamentally the same thing. Wala namang masyadong bago talaga sa ano. Walang bago sa theory 
ng neural networks and deep learning sa ano sa design i mean sa i mean when you construct networks like um uh, one one particular advance that we that that made a, a lot of pro that give us a lot of progress was yung ano auto encoders na yung inputs yung inputs nung sa isang network hindi yun yung in output niya so naging ano siya sort of it was able to capture the essence of a particular data uh like uh Like yeah, face, I'm, a, I'm a big oh. fan of auto encoders. Parang yes. ano nga eh. Parang it's a better alternative to PCA, no? It's able to mm, model yes. nonlinear ano. Yun na yung naging start of the embeddings basically, no, yung yung concept of encoding. And then it's got so many uses nga. I'm I'm really surprised yeah. it's not as popular as it should be. Oh. Yung mga yung mga yung mga true blue ML people, they use it, pero in the business world hindi masyadong ginagamit yung auto encoder eh. so i'm really curious about that no actually it's, it will be it would be very useful for compression kumpara para if you're compressing particular large corpus of materials uh, i don't know uh, siguro ano lang may mga use cases lang siguro na mas tingin nila mas applicable yung iba and medyo may complexity rin kasi sa pag alam nung i mean pag intindi ko ano yung ginagawa ng auto encoder And then another another advance was yung generative adversarial networks. So meron kang discriminant network na siya yung nagkasabi na ah, mali ito, mali yung mali pinoproduce mong mga data. As meron naman nag-generate. So both are neural networks, same technologies, pero the way they the way they function was uh something new, diba? may 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 pinoproduce. But but eventually all of those concepts are 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 just uh you can trace it to back propagation and neural networks which was which was developed several years ago so actually ang ang pinaka ano natin ngayon ang pinaka problem natin ngayon is can we continue with our our model na creating more more and more powerful gpus say by an institute like nvidia and you know because there are many political economic constraints like uh una para large market share of GPUs is just Taiwan in in India so parang 70% I, I I forgot so kapag na paano pa na kagera <laughs> wala nang panagera yeah, na gets disrupted, Taiwan no? yes and baka yun din yung dahilan kung bakit uh, may may tension sa sa mainland and sa Taiwan and another thing is yung foundry na ginagamit ng, ng mga companies like TSMC the way The, what what they used to produce all of these chips. Dalawa yung problem. Una, it's very water intensive, and not just water, but uh, tap water, but ano, uh, uh, purified water, as in pure water. So that will that takes energy and that takes water resources from from the general population. So the production Taiwan. of the chips itself is already a uh, kind of a an environmental challenge, and then. Yes. The usage of the chips, you know, yung running all of that with the power, no, isa pa yon. I, I, kaya nga I mentioned once upon a time, of all of the scenarios na piling ko wala pang uh, solution, it's the climate scenario. Eh, na I can't see a, I can't see an alternative. Yung mga iba may mga counterparts eh, job losses, pwedeng may job hmm. creation, yung mga cheating in school on the on the flip side it, knowledge can become more efficient etc no pero pagdating sa climate and to a lesser extent disinformation i can't find an alternative eh, unless we figure out a more efficient chip or a more or a smaller model that beats all of these larger models parang the consumption of carbon will exponentially increase as we do more ai eh, nakakatakot well if we if I mean, if we select particularly renew, I mean, particularly clean uh, power sources, the renewable, for instance, and uh, maybe nuclear for for running particular circuits, then uh, or particular models, then that that might work. But another another issue pa is nga, yung akin tingin ko yung uh, monopolies. Uh, na in con- in control of the markets. Na sobrang kala natin parang it's so prevalent, it's commodity, GPUs are all are there. Pero first, yung GPUs are 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 produced by mostly by Taiwan. And the production yung yung foundries na nagpo-produce noon, 
na ginagamit ng Taiwan. They, they only buy it from the Netherlands. Netherlands lang yung may capacity mag-produce nun. Yung data naman na nilalearn na ng, ng mga models na to is controlled by by few corporations, Google, Facebook, for social media, uh, etc. So all of these ano, monopolies, you know, suddenly they might, you know, what if 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 they fold or they they refuse access at it. Uh, yeah, it it the the future of AI really it really boils down to specific people, and I'm I'm not comfortable with that. Na you know, it's there's it's a, better if it's more like hegemony, no? Parang yung ano lang yun eh? Parang yung Intel hegemony dati, ba? Diba? Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously there were alternatives, mga AMD and all that, a power PC, pero. Iba talaga, if you get the first mover advantage, ang hirap mabawi eh, unless a new paradigm comes in. No? And that, yeah, I'm, I'm also concerned about the economic monopoly issue. Yeah. Well, that's for the, ano, kung LLM pa rin yung model natin ng AI. But if we are able to surpass that, maybe, you know, think of think of other other ways to represent intelligence. Then... We, we might overcome our current physical limitations. Do you I mean, see, I'm... ano? Do you see like the next step, na ba? I mean, obviously you're plugged into the parang the comsci arena, no? Like for example, the the large language models are not naman new as an idea. They've been around for some time, even the generative models. Pero ngayon sila medyo ano pumotok, no? Because because of the popularity. Baka naman there are new architectures that are anjan lang, no? but still undergoing progression and then becomes the next big thing. Have you, are you seeing any any new trend? Actually, uh, well, well, I mean, yun talaga eh. Kumbaga, sa ngayon, yun yung pinaka-advanced way of, of, of producing intelligent behavior, yung machine learning, particularly neural networks. But there were there are other schools na, I mean, minsan ascendant yung isa, minsan ascendant yung isa, and ngayon ascendant yung neural networks. Pero it has not always been the case. And maybe we can also look at those schools. So meron kang uh, Bayesian, Bayesian schools, meron kang uh, evolutionary algorithms, na mga genetic, genetic algorithm. Nandiyan din yung mga uh, SVM, mga uh, support vector machines, na eventually baka baka if if we are able to produce a machine na doon naman tailored tailored for that tailored for that specific purpose then yeah i mean that's how you kasi hindi mo naman dima, nung, hindi siya progression eh na parang linear parang some old ideas are being resurrected some uh, new ones are being discarded all the time so maybe the trend is not is not as uh, somewhere we can't see but it's already here na hindi lang natin at the top i think we... back propagation is really the big one eh no if nung when that became popular parang the whole field just gravitated towards it no from machine learning to deep learning i don't know what an alternative is to back propagation um pero yeah that that takes it in a completely different path if we say we don't need to model weights the way we do it now then in, kasi a, a big challenge yung big part of that economic and uh, climate challenge is the back propagation yes, because yes, you do need to do all of these calculations diba yun yung talagang driver yeah but marami rin naman din siyang ano uh, mo, pag training the large training a large language model it's it's also very inefficient right i mean you you just dump all the corpus uh, of text that you have and then let the machine interpret it. And maybe that's not most of them that, I mean, all it can do is to replicate kung ano yung, I mean, to condense whatever it is that we already know to be intelligent, right? Because it's our language, it's our documents. So it's not really intelligent behavior per se, but, you know, uh, it's it's just an amalgamation of of what we generated as intelligence. And hindi naman tayo limited dun sa na-produce na natin, di ba? As a, as a human being, we are we can produce more than what we have already produced so baka hindi rin naman nakaka-capture ng LLM baka it's very useful now sa may some business use cases i mean uh it only shows na how much of ano how much of what we do are, are actually you know <laughs> can be replicated by a machine 
all of those business correspondence, all of those emails, all of those. Maybe we can we can in fact do away with it and you know pursue more complex things. So yeah, I mean, I mean if if there is an algorithm which can do physics, which can solve uh quantum gravity, it can solve uh all of these mysteries, then that might, maybe that's the that's what we are looking for, not this LLMs. That's which... the next step, no. Actually, the the big challenge I can see also is. Well, one is of the technological one. We're going to talk about about how do you get over back propagation. Um, the second is a cultural one. Um, I think one thing that, lalo na the LLM is proving, is there's so much about our day to day lives na templated, no? Everything from images, as you said, documents. Alam mo yung nagugulat ako is the video, as in. Mm. Diba yung, if you've heard of Runway ML, you just feed it a photo and then siya yung mag animate And for me, it just it's just mind-boggling na how does it know to follow a certain pattern in terms of the animation, you know, and like the the way the thing will move, you, you know. Sabi ko, that means even, even video is so templated already. And so if you think about it, there's hardly anything original na about the media we consume. If a model can kind of predict what a natural video should look like, <laughs> but yeah. it, it's very hum. It's what is disturbing. It's a humbling thought. Now there's no such thing as uh, originality anymore. And and we're talking about media like art. Kaya dyan ako medyo, let, that's why I'm not I'm not too passionate about the copyright debate. The way mga yeah. artists are complaining about copyright. In my head, you're how do you copyright something when you're just replicating a style that someone else did? So what's the point, right? I mean, I'm sorry you're gonna lose your income, <laughs> but uh but maybe that's the natural way of things. Eh? Talagang yeah. Yeah, and maybe fundamentally the notion of creativity is something that is combinatorial. I mean it's Ah, uh, kasi para we always ascribe some some you know mystical notion about what it is to be creative, what it is to be intuitive, but maybe it's uh, you know uh it's just a faster way of combining what is already there, and there's nothing wrong with it, right? I mean, after all, the mga naisip naman natin, it does. I mean, we have been able to think of it because we are able to consume other information as well so nothing is really original in in a sense and even the way we combine it uh it's also not original because we, we're limited by our brain structures which i mean 99.99.99 percent resemble i mean re similar to each other's brains right wala naman talaga tayo masyadong physiological difference of brains so yeah yeah i mean of course it gets scary now when you bring it to the Parang the other areas of human behavior, like mm. if if we're ready to admit art is a template, uh, what about politics, diba? What mm. about True. sociopathy, <laughs> psychopathy? <laughs> uh, yun nga parang for me, I'm still not ready to admit that. <laughs> parang, <laughs> parang I want to be hopeful that there is such a thing as good behavior and bad behavior, mm -hmm. and you have a choice. No, pero parang the evidence seems to point towards ano, eh, something. Uh, naman pre hindi naman pre predestined pero parang it's inherent na okay given certain conditions people will act in a certain way despite uh parang all ano all claims anyway we're we're at the hour ang bilis no yeah. um, <laughs> uh obviously I'd wa I'd want to talk with you again about other topics but maybe at least for this uh parang segment on history any any last thoughts that you want to leave the audience Siguro, balik ko lang dun. Meron ako na nakita ang quote from Spinoza, Baruch Spinoza. Uh, and he is basically saying uh, that our notion of free will, basically our notion of intelligence na rin, uh, the way we, we assert ourselves to the world. Uh, we have that because we don't know the causes of our actions. But once we are able to learn the causes of our actions, the causes of our behavior, then maybe we might you know, give less regard to the notion of free will if we understand. So maybe that's the same thing with intelligence. Because intelligence, 
uh, we we want to think of it as something that would surprise us or something that would ano uh, go beyond our capacity. But maybe intelligence is something that's you know uh, if we understand how to produce intelligence, it might not be so mystical and it won't be as bad, right? Kumbaga, it's not something to fear. It's not something to to be surprised about, but it's something to to augment our understanding of ourselves and our role in the universe. Wow. Yeah, that's very thought provoking. Yeah. So yeah, so I guess okay. we'll end it. Uh, we'll end it here. Thanks a lot, Jim, and uh, <laughs> we'll catch you again, no, soon for another conversation. Catch you Thank later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.